Hello my friends, welcome to today's video. I'm Jeanette with Vivo Vintage Designs. In today's video I am going to show you how to paint this very simple floral watercolor painting using three colors and just two paint brushes. And this is a really pretty um, floral painting for the front of a card or even just for a simple frame. I'm using my Schmenka paints uh, pan paints and you can see here this is my swatch card the colors that I will be using are magenta permanent olive green and lemon yellow and I'll be using two brushes I have a silver black velvet in a size 4 and an Anna Mason by Rosemary and Company or Rosemary and Co size 3 I'm using the silver black velvet because it has a very fine pointy tip and I'll be using that to create the stems and the leaves of the flowers and I'm using the Anna Mason by Rosemary & Co um, because it has a stubby it's a spotter brush and it has a stubbier tip so that'll work well for the flowers and you can see here in my palette I'm adding a little bit of water so that I can mix my colors and add them I've got my paper towel and I'm using this old brush to mix my paint because mixing the paints, if you use a good brush, you can ruin it because you're scrubbing the paints and that's um, a little rough on the bristles of your better brushes. So I do recommend using an inexpensive brush to mix your colors. So you can see here I am mixing the lemon yellow and I've just added it to the little drop of water that I added to my palette. And now I'm mixing the permanent olive green. And now for the magenta, I am going to have two different mixes, same color. One will be more diluted and the other one will be more pigmented, which means of course, less water, more paint. Okay, now that we have our colors in our palette, I'm going to use a pencil to sketch out a um, how I want my flowers to be. So I want them all coming from one stem. So I'm just going to draw a curved line and at the top of that line, I'm going to draw almost like a, a curved line to indicate where I want my full flowers to be. And I'm keeping my sketch very, very light. I'm not actually drawing out the flowers. I'll do that with the paintbrush. And where I want my flower buds to be, I will draw a smaller curve at the end of the stem that I'm drawing. So this is very basic, very simple. Just a couple of curved lines. And uh, basically that's all it is, is just curved lines. So now I'm using the Anna Mason by Rosemary & Co size 3 spotter brush to create the flowers. And these flowers are really simple. They're just four petal flowers. And they're not going to be directly facing me. They're all going to be at an angle. So you can see here, I am painting very simply, just a couple of brush strokes to create my petals, the top petal and the two side petals. And then the petal at the bottom because it is not facing me. It's just going to be a squashed <laughs> petal because that's the angle that you see. And then I'm going to pick up the heavier consistency magenta and I'm going to drop it in at the base of each of the petals while they are still wet. So again, here I'm creating another full flower. You can see I'm just, just a couple of brush strokes to indicate a petal and then that squashed petal at the bottom. And then I'm dropping in the heavier pigment while the petals are still wet. And as it dries, that'll blend very nicely. So I'm using again the diluted magenta and creating little strokes of the brush that look like petals. 
and then the squashed petal at the bottom. Now picking up the heavier consistency and dropping it at the base of the petals. And for the squashed petal, I'm putting it at the bottom because that's where the shadow would be. And now to create the little buds, you can see I'm just swiping the brush across the paper, creating almost like a triangular shape, and that's my little bud. And then I'm dropping in the heavier consistency at the base. Now we have to wait for this to completely dry. So you can let it dry naturally or you can use a dryer like I did. And now I'm just testing to make sure that they're completely dry because I don't want the colors to blend one into the other. If it's not dry, when I start to add the stems and the leaves, it will blend into the pink. And that's a really nice effect, but it's not what I want for this painting. So I'm making sure that it's completely dry. And now I've added a little sepia to the permanent olive green because I wanted it to be a more dustier kind of green, if that makes sense. I didn't want it to be too bright. So you can see here, I'm using the fine tip of the silver black velvet brush to create my stems. And you can see how that tip creates a really fine, delicate line. And I'm connecting all my flowers and the little buds to that one stem, making sure that my lines connect to the center of the flowers. And now I'm about to create the leaves. And to create the leaves, if you're using a fine point brush like I am, you start with no pressure using the very tip of the brush. And as you drag your brush across the paper, you add a little bit pressure, a little bit of pressure, and that uh, broadens your stroke. And then if you come back up to the tip again towards the end of your leaf, it'll give you a nice fine tip to your leaf. So here you see, started with the tip of the brush, I added a little pressure and I curved my leaf. And I'm just going to continue adding leaves wherever I think I need one. Making sure that some of them are curved and some of them are straight up and down. Some smaller and some larger. And now I want to create the sepals for my little buds. So I'm using the tip of the brush to create kind of like a little ball at the base of the uh, bud. And then I'm using the same technique that I used for the leaves to create the sepals that come up on the, on the little bloom. So I start with the tip of the brush and as I move it along my paper, I add a little bit of pressure and then I lift back up to the point of the brush. Now I'm feeling like I need a little bit of something more. I need to fill in some areas. So I'm just going to create these little branches that don't have buds or anything like that. They just have these little squiggly lines. I'm not even sure if this is any type of flower. It's just something out of my imagination, but I think it's really pretty and very delicate looking. But I wanted to fill in some of the um, white area so you can see I'm just using the very tip of my silver black velvet brush and creating these little branches just again to fill in the areas that I need uh, that I feel need a little bit something more. And this is the point of the painting where you can add more leaves if you like and fill in the area or you can keep it as simple as you like.
Okay, so I've decided I'm done. <laughs> now I'm using a white gel pen. This is a, a Uniball Signo broad tip pen. And I'm going to use this to create a little detail in my petals. So I'm going from the base of the petal towards the tip and I'm just adding a few little white lines and I'm making sure that the lines go in the direction that I want to indicate the petal going in. And I'm not adding anything to the bottom petal, that squashed little petal, because obviously you can't see the inside of that petal. So I'm just adding a few little lines for detail and I think it's a, a pretty nice addition and it's just a simple little step. And now I'm using, I switched to a smaller tip Rosemary & Co brush. This is a triple zero and I've picked up the lemon yellow and I'm just adding a couple of little dots into the center towards the top area of the center. And once that yellow dried, I went into the permanent olive green and added a few more dots closer to the bottom center of the flower. Then I decided to add a little bit more of the yellow. So just a couple of little dots here and there. Very simple. And that is the painting. And I think it's very pretty, very delicate and would make a really nice card. So now I'm going to take my Tombow brush pen and I'm going to add a little sentiment to the bottom. I'm just writing thinking of you. But this would make a really nice card, birthday card, thinking of you card, best wishes, whatever you like. So again, very simple to do. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you give it a try. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe also. Um, take a look in the description box for a list of and links for all the products used. If you don't see the list, click on show more or the arrow pointing down. And please consider joining my Facebook group, Vivo Vintage Design Tutorials. See you in the next one.